Please welcome Ashley Judd, everybody. Good thing going here, don't you? Uh, I do actually. Yeah, yeah. But with the, with them and the thing and the, what do you mean by that exactly? Well, you know, not all persons of Scottish extraction even acknowledge Thanksgiving as a legitimate holiday. So well, not all. Well, you're married <laughs> to a Scotsman, aren't you? Yeah, there's an, I've got an agenda there about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it a problem at, at home? Does he say I'm no wanting any Thanksgiving with that well, heathen turkey? I'm hoping that you have some credibility. So come 11:30 tonight, I'll be getting a cheerful call. Hun, can't wait for Thanksgiving this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you you should have Thanksgiving. If you, but you live in America, don't you? We're in between Tennessee and Scotland. Really? <laughs> wow. There's something right you don't hear. Right in the middle of the Atlantic. <laughs> wow. is, there, is there a direct flight? <laughs> what part of Scotland do you live in? And, you know, I don't... I can't talk about it. Oh, right, okay, like, yeah. You know, because it doesn't mean a thing to people here, but all of those... Um, uh, parasites over, over yonder who work. They have in very bad press over there. Yeah, they uh, they are they're very very nice. They make the American press look like really very very civilized very nice, and lovely. smart. Yeah, no. Devoted to the truth. <laughs> why do you think that? Why do you think the, the 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 Scottish and English press are so mean? I think it's because they have so many dailies that they're constantly looking for fodder to print because otherwise they would run blank papers. Right. Yeah, if, that probably wouldn't sell as well. Well, there's something like twenty. <laughs> Seven papers every single day. Yeah, there's a lot of papers. So they need yeah, a yeah. load of crap to fill yeah, them yeah, in yeah, with. They do. And they don't mind writing it either. They just make stuff up. They make stuff out about you. I mean, I didn't know that you were living in Scotland, though. They've completely disabused me of the high school notion that there should be some verisimilitude of truth in the news. Oh, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like, what was the, what's the word again? Vers, vers, verisimilitude. Something yeah. along Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I make, now, I what make about, words up. Well, what, never mind Scotland. What about the South? The movie's set in the South, right? Is it, is it an accurate portrayal of the South? Is it? I think it is. Yeah. Um, it was very important to Joey Lauren Adams, who is from North Little Rock. Who's been here? She's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she in, directed the film. She wrote it and directed well, it. Well, good for her. And I think that the movie is a really honest portrayal of one individual's experience in the South. What part of the South are you from? You're from the South, aren't you? Uh, my people are from Eastern Kentucky. Yeah. And I've lived in Middle Tennessee for a long time now. Right. Uh, I, I like it down the South. You've been in Arkansas. I like Arkansas. Yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it's it's lovely. very lovely. You've been lush. in Ozark. Ozark's a nice town. It's got a nice catfish place there. Do you like the catfish? I love catfish. A bit tentacly. I like them to get the tentacles off before I go in. I try not to remember that my dad would fish catfish, and I would sometimes wake up to the sound of him pounding the head. Oh, it was awful. Man. It was awful. It was but awful. but, but he, he, would wait, he would take it home and wait until it well, woke up. Well, we lived on the Kentucky wait, River. Yeah? And he would run lines, and that's how I would wake up some My dad ate my goldfish. I think that, right? <laughs> he did. He did. <laughs> He'd be appalled if I thought I'd be talking. No, he didn't eat my goldfish. He would have, but he never did. <laughs> no, no, he went to live on a farm. You have a farm, don't you? Mm -hmm. Any goldfish? No goldfish, but lots of other animals. What We've do you have, then? Do you have, are you a humane farmer, or do you, you know? Well, we, we have a lot of domestic pets, just little, you know, right. pet things. We've right. got six cats and two dogs, right. one of whom is here tonight. And then our farm kind of defies the laws of nature. We've got a lot of intraspecies friendliness. We've got turkeys and <laughs> possum, raccoons. Define Everybody's friendliness <laughs> in this instance. Well, Dario, one night, for example, we hear all this, this ruckus outside, which is always a great moment on the farm. It's like, what's that? Shh, did you hear that? Go oh, get the flashlight. You know, we get to run around yeah. and look at stuff. And, you know, usually it means that some little animal is about to come live with us again. Oh, really? Which happens often. But one night he was out doing that and he shone the flashlight under the back porch and this little possum was sitting there alongside this little cat that we'd been trying to catch for ages and they've just they've just palled around for a while now and they're chums and it's I, really sweet. I, you know there was a skunk and a raccoon used to cuddle up together at my house in Hollywood. Yeah. I no know. really? Really? No was outside that Tom the and Katie? Yeah uh, no not Tom and Katie it was in uh... <laughs> I gotta come back here. Showing off, but I watched the opening monologue. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did. No, there was skunk and the raccoon. They would cuddle up together, and then I think the raccoon got kind of tired of the smell, and then just. Uh, uh, <laughs> but that, they did. They used to cuddle up at night. It was uh, very touching, rather Disney in many ways. <laughs> well, we have to take a break. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with Ashley Judd, everybody. <laughs> Oh, 
Hold on a second. Shut up, chatty Cathy. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Ashley Judd. We were just chatting about something that you can't know about, but whoa! <laughs> uh, so your family is originally Scots-Irish then, right? Uh, my family's a little bit of everything. We're right. sort of um, Western European Heinz 57 blend. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. I have actually one grandfather who was Sicilian, so I call myself a Sicilian hillbilly. Sicilian hillbilly. <laughs> yeah, you never forget, but you can't remember what you don't forget. <laughs> I don't even know if that makes sense at all, but... Yeah. I just so like you married a Scotsman who's a racing driver. He is. How's he doing with that? It's the indie stuff he does, Yes, it? it's the indie racing league. Is that dangerous? Uh, it depends on how you look at it. <laughs> well, uh, if you're it, driving it a be. car in a track with other guys <laughs> driving, is at it dangerous? At 230 miles an hour, yeah. it could be construed as vaguely dangerous. Would, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you choose to see it that way. Yeah, was it, was it, uh, was it something you were into before you met him? Oh, you? I absolutely detested it. I thought it was the dumbest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I, as a child, I would be looking for Kentucky basketball games on our small black right. and white TV, and I would see open wheel racing on, and I would just, you know, to whatever extent I cursed as a, an 11-year-old, I'd shout at abuse at the TV. I thought it was so dumb. Really? Wow. Yeah. Well, they had these big fat strongly. tires, and the little person's just in there, and they can barely see, and they're going, Meh. and now, of course, I know that they're trying to keep the tires warm under yellow, and it's very exciting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you just, you're, you're loyal to your man, and I think that's nice. I don't think it's that exciting. <laughs> Well, it's a, race no, then. no, I'm sure it is. I actually, the NASCAR I watch, but I haven't really got into the indie stuff. I'm sure it is. I mean, the indie cars are much smaller, right? And they're much, Why is NASCAR more popular than indie racing? Well, my uh, layperson's opinion on that is everyone watches NASCAR and thinks they can go out to the garage and with a certain wrench make the car do that. I think that's, <laughs> I, think there's, I think there's some truth in that. I think you that there's think a little that, yeah. bit of delu happy delusion involved. Yeah, like, that's right. hey, watch this. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they that's can... Right. I get me some decals, I'm a NASCAR champ. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's true, maybe. I, I, that's what I think anyway when I'm watching it. Like, I'm just a couple of stickers away from glory. <laughs> I you just watch... need to get that sponsor. You know, do you know what's interesting? I can hear a little bit of a Scottish accent creeping in with you. Does it, do other people say that to you? Sometimes. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It's well, I used to have this crisis of conscience about my, like, identity. I didn't think I had an integrated and consolidated sense of self because wherever I am, I'll sort of drift into some reflections of that accent. Right. Well, and, that's empathetic, this... though. That's okay. And, and I've, I've come to say, you know what, I just, I don't sing, but I have a musical ear, right. and I enjoy doing dialects and film, and it's just a, it's an, in a way actually of honoring the people with whom I'm spending time, but the strangest thing happens when I go to Scotland, I've got this bizarre Irish accent. <laughs> it's very strange. When I go to Wales, I have a Pakistani accent. <laughs> That's true. It's true. I go to Wales, and I'm like, oh, it's very nice to be here. And they're like, what? Why? Speaking in a Pakistan, because it's as close as I can get. There's a bunch of Pakis in our old neighborhood, so that's really fun to me. <laughs> oh dear, it's very bad. Listen, we're completely out of time. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm Listen, sorry. Listen, good Dude, luck with it. Now, this fun. film, just before we go, this film is not out all at once, right? It's going in different ways. Yes, way. it's in the big markets, and although I don't read reviews, everyone around me is having a very difficult time not telling me it's getting great reviews. Good, good. <laughs> so then it will roll out to the smaller towns. Good. Well, I, I wish you luck with it, and, uh, and it's lovely It's lovely to meet you, and, and have you. a good time in Scotland. Be careful with the press over there. I will. All right. <laughs> Actually, enjoy it, everybody. We'll be right back. has written a book, uh, which is uh, no mean feat, and I, uh, I always think when someone's written a book that, you know, when someone has a movie, you show a clip, you see, but uh, you can't show a clip of a book, so I always like to read a little passage. Uh, so here's a, a little bit from this book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very good. It's a memoir. It's called All That Is Bitter Is Sweet. It's in stores now. It's written by, and please welcome, Ashley Judd, everybody. Terribly glamorous this evening, if you don't mind my saying so. You look very, very lovely indeed. Thanks very much. No, it's true. You probably heard that before. In this accent, too, because your <laughs> husband's Scottish. Once or twice. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's a good driver, your husband. He's a fabulous driver. Yeah, he's doing well, isn't he? He's doing great. He won yeah. his first race of the season. Yeah. Had a nice podium finish last weekend. Yeah. And is hoping it'll be warm at Long Beach this weekend. Yeah, it'll be warm at Long Beach. cool last year, and he didn't do so well. It was hot year before, and he won. Yeah, it'll probably be hot then. Can you check the weather report for Long Beach? Yeah, we'll check it out for you. <laughs> we're, uh, we're big with that. Now, listen, I'm going to talk to you about this. It's a memoir of your life. Did you put in... No, let's scratch off memoir and put travel diaries. Travel diaries. Could All right. Do that for me, please? All right. Let me see. There you go. Travel diaries. Because the word uh, memoir seems to have misguided folks oh, ever really? so slightly. What is it? They think they're going to get tales of, uh, you know... Hang on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Nicely done. Ah, ah, look. You got, when you were on your travels, you got a little tattoo, didn't you? <laughs> little sailor tattoo, and then Dario. Nice. That's nice. That's classy. Yeah. Put his number, his, like his race car number on oh, the Oh, what is it then? Well, it started with 27. All right. So one for each cheek, 27 and 10. 27 and 10. <laughs> get that, did they? No, I, I didn't really get it myself. What do you mean? 27 and 10. <laughs> but I can't, you can, is you, do focus, you have a photograph focus, of your butt in this focus. book? I am so getting it. <laughs> do you, uh, do, well, what's the, what's the travel diary then? It's about your travels around the world making films and uh, your philanthropic work? It's, it's about the humanitarian work. I started in right. 2004 and have since been to 13 different countries in the Global South, some of them multiple times, visiting slums and refugee camps, hospices. That must be very difficult. Makeshift you... schools. Yeah. Is it, is it very difficult? Do you find it very depressing when you go to uh, the... It's simultaneously shattering and life-affirming. And right. that's, so, that's why the book is called All That Is Bitter and Sweet, which is taken from a 15th century prayer. And oh. if, I'm, if I'm tapped into a power that's greater than myself, then that power does the work, and all I have to do is really suit up and show up. Right. Do you ever experience doubt uh, in your faith when you see suffering? I lose suffering? my faith every single trip. Right. I have the breakdown, but fortunately today, because I found a process that works for me, right. I know I'm going to have the breakthrough. I can't necessarily make it happen and I can't accelerate the process, but as long as I have the confidence to uh, call someone like Archbishop Desmond Tutu and oh, ask yeah, for he's help. Oh, yeah, he's been here. He's been here, Desmond Tutu. Reach out and yeah. use my tools. Then eventually... Do you get to call I email him a lot. I really? do. Yes. Uh, you didn't give me his email address. Oh, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. He actually did, didn't he? He did, yeah. He calls himself Arch on his emails. He does. I know. Like he Arch for Archbishop. Yeah. yeah, I know. It's kind of good. I feel bad now for drawing a moustache and a tattoo on you in the front of the book. You know, if we take our... The world can be a very serious place. It's can. important not to take ourselves too serious. Well, all right, then will I draw glasses on too then? I'll draw some glasses on. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's pretty good. It has. I think it's, I feel bad, but look, it comes off. There you go. Oh, it doesn't come off. I noticed I, that you studiously avoided mentioning that the book is on the New York Times bestseller list. It is on the bestseller because, list? Because you don't want to make me feel bad because yours was number three and mine's only number five. That no, mine didn't you. get to number three. It only got to number four, which is still better than number five, but only number four. Yeah. Yeah, I Your know. Your book was good, by the way. Well, you know, you thank you. It. You know that, um, when my, the, do you notice, all, see, I don't really pay attention to the New York Times book list unless I have a book out, which is only twice in my life. Um, but did you, when I noticed when, when my book came out, Mackenzie Phillips's book came out, when she talked about that thing with her dad, and, uh, and Ted Kennedy, who had just died, his book had just come out. You know, I'm like, oh, come on, man, I don't have a chance here. <laughs> do, what, what's, what are you up against right now? I actually don't know. I haven't really paid attention either. I just try to do the next good, right, honest thing and right. let go of the outcome so and try to be on time yeah, right. and make sure I've shampooed my hair. Those are kind of my priorities. <laughs> this could be me talking. <laughs> I, are you doing the book tours? So are you going and talking to... I am. Me? This is my fourth city. I'm on my way to San Francisco uh, to spend some time the next few days. And I've enjoyed it. I especially enjoy the speaking engagements where right. I, I can interact with the audience. People ask very thoughtful questions. And we can go into some detail about the narratives because, you know, essentially the book is just me transmitting to others the very sacred stories that vulnerable and disempowered people have shared with me. Right. When we can get into some detail. It becomes really... It becomes really precious, actually. I mean, I'm, I'm not ending with applause anymore because it doesn't seem to fit. There's almost Should a... Should have been here for the monologue. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a 
tenderness about these um, dialogues that we're having around the country, and so we're closing now with a moment of silence. Mm, that's interesting. Which tonally fits better. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've inadvertently started using them in the show. <laughs> I found it. I, I, I must admit, when you when you open up a little bit in in any artistic format, whether it's uh, broadcast or um, or in the writing of a book or the making of a film, even um, that people see and respect vulnerability. Do you think that's true? Do you think that people respond? Oh, some to people it? absolutely respond on it. Really, you think so? <laughs> I saw that you had some language earlier, and I assume they. Oh yeah, no, you swear as yeah. much as you like. I don't give. Ooh, la, la. But, uh, you hear that? Thing. I do think that people respect vulnerability and there's one of my favorite quotes from the book is from a guy called Bob Keegan and he talks about how if we will truly see another person we take the risk of being recruited to their welfare. Oh. If I really see you and acknowledge right. your humanity, if I take the time to witness your process, right. then that engages my empathy. And my feelings really teach me what my values are. And some people can lean into that mm. and have the willingness to be recruited to that welfare. And other people, they can't go there. And so they send me death threats on Twitter. Do, now, I was going to ask you, are you on Twitter? Because that, there can I am be, on Twitter now. Right. I will follow you on the Twitter. What's Thank your Twitter you. handle? Uh, it's very complicated. All right. Ashley Judd. Ashley Judd. <laughs> I'll never remember that, but we'll write it down later. The, uh, so you just do the little thing and then Ashley Judd and mm -hmm. one, right, I'll follow you. I enjoy you the conversation, it's fun. I like it and whenever people are in any way negative on Twitter, they have this great thing, you can just block them. Mm -hmm. And then they're gone. So for me right now, it's block, block. Yeah, block, just block, block them. Block, just block, block them. Block, and when block, they say, block, hey, why block. don't you have block them? You know, I just, <laughs> when they say, get this guest on your show, I'm like, you're blocked. <laughs> I, sometimes I block people who are nice just to keep everyone on edge. <laughs> I had my first um, strange experience with Twitter recently in that I heard something from Dario on Twitter before I heard it from him in person. Uh oh. Like the power went out at our house and he was like, oh, power's back on, no excuse for not going to the gym. And I was like, the power went out today? <laughs> oh, that's bad. But he would not go to the gym if the power went out? Oh, no, he's very, he's dead fit. He's just. Well, yeah, handsome. I know. He's very fit, isn't he? Fit, handsome Scotsman. Hate him. I mean, he's awesome. I haven't seen him in a while. We had a, we had, you're complimenting me for looking pretty, which yeah, I, yeah, which I do, appreciate. Yeah. And I was contrasting it with the uh, picnic that we had this afternoon in our rental car in the parking lot of In-N-Out Burger. Really? <laughs> Did you have the double-double animal style? Double-double animal style. Yeah, animal style, yeah. yeah I and then you had a burger. <laughs> Well, you're married, you could if you want, in the parking lot. How was your time in Nashville when you came? I love Nashville, yeah. it's fantastic. I could live there, I think, if they would let me, which I doubt, but I would, you know. Yeah, we've got a one Scotsman per county quota, so you right. have to go to, to Davidson because we're in Williamson. Well, I could go to Davidson County. It was Davidson County near, uh, there was a fantastic diner I went to there. Jeff and I went, I can't remember, not that Jeff, another Jeff. Uh, <laughs> I don't often take my skeleton to uh, <laughs> diners. He's not that big an eater. Well, we... we... Bulls. Yeah. I think the, the pretty much the best cooking, though, we think, is around our house. So. No, I, it's really a lovely place. You're from there, aren't you? Originally from Eastern Kentucky, been right. in Middle Tennessee area for a long time. Yeah, you, there, you had family here last night. Wynonna was here last yes. night. Yeah, yeah, I know. Gal Voce, did she sing for you? No, no, she was in a bit of a bad mood, actually. Was she sour? <laughs> no, not really. I cheered her up. You know, with my chat. <laughs> Try and spread the love a little bit, you know what I mean. Positive energy into the universe, why not, I say. So, awkward pause or mouth organ then? I think I want to try for the mouth organ. Okay, if you feel you can. I, I have no idea what I'm getting myself into, by the way, but I'll try to make the bolder choice. Yeah, I think it's all right. It's a, you know, it's a sanitized and completely brand ask. new. Yeah, this one is mine. I, this is the one I blow all the time. And uh, and and you've had Billy Conley on this show. Billy, sure yeah, Billy won the Golden Harmonica. There, are, there have did. been uh, a few people won the Golden. Billy Conley won. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris won. And uh, oh yeah, and uh, a mouse. Was was very excited by that. <laughs> huh? Hugh Laurie won and somebody else won. So if you can play, you can win the golden harmonica. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Oprah. A one, two, three, and. <laughs> I'm just trying to fake it. You should have done an awkward pause. <laughs> oh, nice. 
nice, yeah. No, wow, hey, 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 look at this. Thank you. Is that from a Sultan cake? Look, just because you do that with your hand doesn't mean you can play. That's the last bit you do. That, you don't do that your first day. That's for experts. I am just looking around here. That makes soulful eyes, soulful eyes, like you need it. Yeah, yeah, feel it, feel it, baby. He's good. I'm touched. Oh. I'm getting a Zamboni. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny.